Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Green Arrow FPL podcast and Fantasy Football Hub as we look ahead to game week 33 with the running now confirmed. My name is Fergie, and I'm here with the brilliant Rich Clark. Uh, Rich, how are you? And what colour was your arrow in game week 32? Hi, Fergie. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm well, thank you. Good. And on a third successive green arrow uh, in game week 32. It's, it's a couple of game weeks since we potted. I think we potted last Monday, was it? And uh, yeah, we've had a couple of game weeks go by, but it, I don't know how it feels for you, Fergie, but three on the bounce should be making me feel a lot a lot better than it is. It feels like wading through treacle, really, just going you know, very, very small gains each week. And it just feels like most of the most of the things are going right in terms mm. of like the the eight out of nine of the team team seem to perform. And then one player comes along that you don't own and just completely ruins it for you. So uh, it does. Even when you just... kind of get get a few points, get a few like differential points, someone else who's reasonably of the same ownership is doing it doing it for other players. You you kind of said just before we went on air, like the Poro goal this week just wiped out any kind of gains you made. Um, it just it seems to happen every week. It seems to be that the general sort of population of FL manager these days are so engaged and clued up through you know, you know for various reasons that it's hard to actually find that that real edge in it nowadays, especially yeah. when you're this and, late on in the season. Unless you get a you know a piece of bench jam, I mean there has been a couple of weeks where we've had uh, quite a bit of that going around. Although you know none of that has ever really seems to come my way. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was a Garnacho one, one there a couple of weeks. We had ago. a few bits of Garnacho yeah. bench jam for because we had um, Harland Mister Game, didn't we? Foden Mister Game, you know. So we've had a lot of, of the players you would expect to start matches haven't, and therefore um, bench players have come into play. So. So that's been great and great when it happens, but I just haven't had that sort of yeah. sort of season, and it continues to be continues to be so. But uh, be fine, you know, we 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 carry on. We're still hoping. You know, you can get. There's a lot of high scoring weeks to come. I think oh, you know, thirty four, thirty five, thirty seven. You know, they could be hundred and fifty point weeks. So there's plenty of chances to um to gain. So you scored sixty four, uh, two hundred twenty two k. You captain Salah. There was a, a, a massive split for captaincy this week. They all they all there kind was. of seem to end up, you know, kind of uh, evenish. I went for Palmer, but, yeah. but but Salah was the right two eight move. two eights and two fives, wasn't it? Yeah, two of them got eight, exactly. two of them got five. So a three point difference. Yeah, it's not much of a muchness, but uh, yeah, pretty similar, pretty similar debate this week as well. I think with a with a, albeit oh, a smaller, it's going to be smaller pond. It's going to be so so tough this week, and it's you know it's obviously the Man City. You know, plum match against Luton. Haaland scored five against them a few weeks ago. But is he going to play? Is Fona going to play? We have absolutely no idea. So that's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Um, I know the Champions Champions League though. What a couple of games they were the incredible, weren't they? Absolutely fantastic. And obviously, you know, a load of European games this evening as well. But yeah, what what an evening! I sat I sat in a bar and I we had them on the two TVs. And I was just like, wow, wow, wow. It was it was absolutely superb football. Great yeah. to see, you know, in the Champions League as well. Because I think I think historically at this level, it, there's a kind of a you know, a lot of defensive sort of play, but fair play to all four teams. They just went for it, didn't yeah. they? It was fabulous absolutely. watch. Um I scored sixty points. Uh with the late news that Foden was benched, I I I was planning a move anyway. I still had Pedro Neto for my sins. I moved him on to Garnacho uh, just to kind of make sure I had eleven. Um, you know, he, he he blanked. They were playing Liverpool. I wasn't kind of expecting much, but I wanted him in for kind of later on as an enabler as well. And obviously, they mm -hmm. get he gets the double a bit later. Um, I was quite fortunate actually because if I hadn't done anything, Mateta would have come on straight straight for Foden. So I thought I was missing out on Mateta's points, but Gusto. Missed out, didn't he? So Mateta came on for Gusto, thankfully for me. Right. So just a, a smallish red, 350k. Team's fine. Had the return of off off eight Nori again. What what legend he's been? He's just been absolutely insane. He he's kept me afloat these last few weeks. If it wasn't for he's eight Nori, I'd be about five or six hundred k. He's um, been the one the one positive from your wild card. I would been, say, isn't he's he? He's been really? unbelievable. So yeah, I'm you know, yeah, I'm over the moon with him. Um, I've decided that I'm I'm probably not going to bench boost in 34. I gave it a bit of thought this week, and kind of look at 
looking at what my bench boost would be, it would include Palmer and Gusto, who are away to Arsenal in Game Week 34, single game day, and uh, uh, like Harland and, and Foden, who, who you know, who, who again, I, th- I think they're away, aren't they, in 34, single game day. Um, you know, so there's just nothing. And, and Kaminsky for Luton, who doesn't double either. So there's just nothing to get excited about for that bench boost. So I've decided to, to you know to, to kind of roll it over to 37, hence the Garnacho move. You know, I'll I'll have Gusto and Palmer. I'll hold them through now 35. So I'll, I'll you know I'll have them double 35, 37 as well. So we will we will see. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a a tough week this week. I'm kind of clinging on my fingernails with with not many chips left. I'm kind of 350k. It's a bit of a boring place to be, but I'm just hoping that you know. I get a bit of luck in the free hit in 34. Because as, as we've seen numerous times, we're going to do a bit of a, a, a violin mode and violin mode for Adam Hopcroft in a second. But as we've seen, like time and time again, when you play your chips sometimes, they're not always optimal moves, are they? And I can see some pretty good players being taken out in game week 34 for a free hit, for example, when, you know, there are some pretty good single game day fixtures and players as well. So, um, yeah, it, just, yeah it, continue, it continues to happen, doesn't it? I mean, like last week, you know, Watkins just suddenly comes up with a brace <laughs> after the majority of the engaged universe has sold him. Amazing. Comes up with a with a double figure haul, and again, you know, I, I noticed halfway through the game week actually, in some mini leagues, you know, that a lot of dead teams, people who hadn't even played a, a transfer for sort of ten weeks, suddenly had sixty, seventy points. You know, whereas everybody who's oh. over managing or just being really careful with their transfers at about thirty. Yeah. And it's just mad. It's absolutely mad. You know, you move away off perfectly good players and they, they hurt you almost every time. They do and uh, and again I think I think it's because now like you know, like I say with all the content, all the all the kind of tools out there, I think, you know, a lot lots of FL managers now are becoming just really, really good at building optimal teams for the current moment, but also for the game weeks in advance. You know, you, you it's it's very rare you 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 know you completely dead end into a game week where your team isn't half decent for the following week. It just doesn't work like that, does it anymore? Especially in the second half of the season. And as we've seen, like I well I well carded out Saka and Watkins in twenty four because they had roughish fixtures. They both braced, and Saka's got to brace the following <laughs> week as well. <laughs> and just while we're on that, let's give a shout out to to Adam Hofgroth. It was um, he's had he's had a, he's had my sort of run these last few weeks, haven't he? It's a, a bit of a, a bit of a violent moment for Adam. Um, he wild cards in in game week thirty one, and he That's took right. out Foden on his wild card, who obviously proceeded to go and score a hat trick. Um, and then for game week thirty two, he thought, "Bugger this! I'm bringing in Foden." So he took out Saka for Saka. <laughs> <laughs> he disappeared. He took out Saka <laughs> for Foden. And Foden didn't play. <laughs> Saka scored. Oh my god, you just can't make it up. You cannot you cannot make it up, can you? It's unbelievable how this uh, how this game unfolds yeah. at times. You can't you cannot make some stuff up, can you? It's unbelievable. But... Um, just before we move on, and uh, Rich gives his thoughts on the confirmed end of season. Welcome to everyone. Uh, so Khan uh, is in. Um, A one says captain could be big this weekend. I agree. It's, um, it could it could be huge. It could be such a big differentiator this weekend. Um, FPL Mackham is in. Says evening, gents. Time for the spaffs. And Di Thomas, evening, gents. Happy Masters Day, indeed. Rich can't, cannot wait for the Masters. Uh, Todd is in. Uh, FPL Jelly says, sweating on Foden this week. Absolutely, we have no idea who's going to play on Saturday. Uh, Conrad is in. FPL Bureau, Andy Parker, Jammer, Denver, uh, Bureau, FPL Whoops, FPL Copycat, uh, Christian Romeo, uh, Blessing Osiri, Alan McNamara, and many, many more. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, FPL Bureau is sitting at uh, 19k. And but there's there's lots of people in the chat who are who are kind of um, sat around you know two three hundred k the same as us Richard finding it hard. Let's just hope that the the patient play is going to pay off over these next few weeks. Uh, I'm nine percent. I hope I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I think it will, it's, 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 you know, especially for you with your wild card. I think that those with the wild card in thirty five and the bench boost thirty seven, I think both weeks are gonna be so, so strong. Um I'm nineteen seventy four asks, where is the spasom spasometer 
spathometer. We haven't used it this week. Um, we didn't actually fully fulfill the ratings uh, for our our free hit. So we, oh, I don't know. I, I'm, we, I'm just, we were somewhere between a spaff and a super spaff. I think we, just did, had, uh, we, oh, we we haven't played any chips since, have we? But I can't, uh, I can't have coming a, out again. I can't have 35. a mere and two spaffs for my three chips used. That's just dread. <laughs> Same as last year, just absolutely dreadful. Um, but yeah. So, Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, we've got the uh, the lay of the land, Rich. Um, obviously, the big news this week is that Double Game Week 37 has been confirmed. That expected. Well done to Ben Krellin. I think I think he completely predicted every single double right in 34. He was a bit unsure on 35 and 36. It landed in 35, the Chelsea Spurs game. Um, and then he got 100% correct, 37. So, you know, well done, Ben. Absolutely fantastic. If you don't follow Ben... Uh, fantasy football hub uh you know he does lots and lots of work on there and also on twitter at ben Crowley. he's an absolute legend but yeah do you want to kind of give us a a skimmy rich on on you know on on the rest of the season how it looks yeah yeah sure so if you are if you're new to the show or you're just catching up i see double game week 34 is coming up it's around the corner um most people listening or watching will, will already be in, getting repaired for that prepared for that already um, so the likes of Liverpool and Arsenal assets are going to be very popular as two of the top teams double there, supported by Crystal Palace, Everton, Bournemouth, Wolves and Sheffield United. I won't go too much into those doubles as we've covered them on previous episodes, but the uh, the Game Week 35 double immediately following uh, double Game Week 34 gives a double, the first of two doubles to both Chelsea and Spurs. So whatever strategy you're on, their assets look good now to to, to bring in, um, particularly if you have a free hit to play in game week 34, as you can load up on Spurs and not worry about their blank. But uh, just be wary on Spurs before then if you are free hitting, or sorry, if you are... Um, uh, playing through 34 because uh, they blank there. But in game week 37, a completely different set of teams uh, will will double. So uh, Man City, Brighton, Newcastle and Manchester United will all have a double game week in game week 37. City is away to Fulham, away to Tottenham. Brighton is away to Newcastle, home to Chelsea. Newcastle is home to Brighton, away to Manchester United, and Man United, home to Arsenal, home to Newcastle. The second Spurs uh, double, two home games, Burnley and Manchester City, and Chelsea will go away to Forest and away to Brighton. So retaining those Chelsea and Spurs assets through to the end of the season looks very wise. And also, you know... It, Fergie mentioned I've got a wild card left. If you've got a wild card left, the obvious week to play that is now in game week 35, where you can load up on Chelsea and Spurs assets in particular, plus play to a bench boost if you have one in game week 37. We're really on split strategies, I think, now the game. You know, people who've wild carded already will already be playing from a long distance towards game week 37. I believe that's your strategy, Fergie. So, no, but yeah. equally, there'll be a a huge tidal wave of managers who who activate the wild card in game week 35 and then are very strong from a fixtures perspective to the end of the season. Slight issue really I've noticed in the last couple of game weeks is that the teams that are doubling, you know, they aren't that great. You know, we all know we're in a three three horse race for the title and that Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester City are the standout teams, but Yes, Manchester City have a have a double game week in game week thirty seven, but they are probably going to rotate the most out of any team during the run in, particularly if they get through in the in the Champions League. So then you look at teams like Newcastle and Man United and Chelsea and Tottenham, and they're you know they're leaky. You know they 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 leak a lot of goals. They might they might score a few goals, but their their defenses are not good. And if you're if you're loading for a bench boost from a long way out and you have to play their assets for weeks versus say Arsenal defenders, you know, there's a risk associated with that, that, that I'm not really sure I want to fully take on. So just blasting a wild card full of doublers may need a bit of, a bit of reconsideration. I think, um, I, think the I personally may, may not go crazy. I think the fixtures as well. Don't, don't, you know, they're, they're not great, you know, let's, let's be honest, you know, you don't, you don't want to kind of downplay a, a double game week 35, but, Chelsea have got Aston Villa away, which is going to be a very, very tough match. 
and home to Spurs, which is going to be a very, t- very tough game as well. You know, plenty, mo- you know, most engaged marriages have, pr- have probably got Palmer or plan to get Palmer. Outside of that, mm. is there anyone really who you think, oh, I've got to have, I've got to have this player for those fixtures? Well, wouldn't, they're, they're wouldn't really you rather you, if you're going to load up? If you've got, if you, is it honestly sensible to stack your team with Petrovic and Gusto when you've got? Villa and Tottenham. Villa and Tottenham. Yeah, it's a hard, hard game. You know, they're two solid. I fully expect them to concede exactly. at least two goals in each of those games. Exactly. And then, but yeah. even even the Spurs ones, um, home to Arsenal. You know, it's going to be incredibly tough. Away to Chelsea. You know, away to Chelsea is going to be tough. Spurs exactly. don't keep clean sheets. They don't do clean sheets. Again, most engaged managers will have, you know, Son who can who can score against anyone. Again, is there anyone else really who you're thinking? Yeah, you know, yeah. let's jump in. in Werner, Brennan, Johnson, Madison, you know, yeah. the fullback. But they're punt, they're punt, they're punty, aren't they? I mean, Porro's going to have revived interest after his goal last week, yeah. but you know, he hadn't done anything for ages. And at, and at five point nine million, that's going to really stretch a budget on a wild card to have him in, particularly if you want to keep a Salah or keep a Saka, yeah. you know, a, pr- a sort of premium player who doesn't double. So lots of decisions to be made. And I'm not sure that if you look at those fixtures in game week 36 and in the last game week of the season, you're going to want Saka. You're going to want Salah yeah. in those teams. Yeah. So I think perhaps, you know, blasting six doublers plus all Newcastle and all Man United looks nice on paper, but I, I'm not sure I'll go that way. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of games in, in 35 and 36, which, which I look at, you know, look at Wolves, home to Luton, for example, Newcastle home to Sheffield United, Man United home to Burnley. There's different kinds of options there which are going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, um, we've we've had a bit in the chat. Um, a couple of people are uh, wild card in this game week, actually, in, in 33, uh, which is interesting. You okay. know, I know ahead of 34 as well, which is obviously a different, a different strategy. Um, so, yeah, you, so, so you've kind of mentioned, Rich, we've... We've got some managers now who are going to be free hitting thirty four. So this is the last transfer or transfers they will make, you know, because they'll be free hitting thirty four, potentially wild cards in thirty five, and then obviously thirty six, thirty seven will will all be dictated by by that wild card. And then we've got um, players like myself who are who are kind of you know <laughs> I've got the wild card left and are kind of going through. So what we've done is you've picked a few players for you know for for people with different strategies haven't you so the the first one is the kind of dead enders uh do you just want to mm-hmm. talk to a few of the options you've picked for these sort of players which are like yeah so me. i think i think these there they could obviously have been more than more than five players on on each slide but for people on on my strategy which is to play the double in 34 with what you have yeah no no free hit as many doublers as you can wild card 35 and then play through probably to a bench boost in 37. The, the, these players are more designed towards that strategy. So really, it's some obvious stuff here. There's your 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 uh, talisman 8, Nori, there is in the in the background. He's still a little bit of a flag player this week. He may be uh, still a risk of not starting this weekend. So I think he's one waiting for um, a team news update on before buying him, but only 4.7 mil. Looks a really good shout. Wolves have nice fixtures either side of Game Week 34 as well. Um, and then it's all about, you know, um, loading up on Arsenal and Liverpool players. Now, we're going to make the assumption most teams have got Gabriel in them. Most teams have got Saliba in them, you know, or or, one, or Raya perhaps, you know, that's one or two Arsenal players. So Saka's in most teams. Obviously, if you haven't got a player like that, it's still worth getting them in this week because they have a home game with Villa then a nice double and they're just not they're not conceding any goals. I think yeah. they've had three clean sheets on the bounce. And so a single defender for Arsenal um isn't really, you know, you're going backwards when they keep a clean sheet because there's so many people out there with with two. But assuming most people have at least thought about that and got that covered, Kai Havertz really sticks out as a as a really nice option in midfield. And with the doubts over Phil Foden, for instance, this week, you know, many will be looking to potentially move off Foden if it doesn't look like he's going to play. And uh, moving to Havertz looks like a really nice short-term option. Yeah. Um, his, his form over the last five, six game weeks has been incredible. I think he scored is it 47 points or something. I, can't, I may not be completely right, but he's actually returned a huge amount in recent weeks and um, finally beginning to 
fulfill some of his potential. If you don't want to go Havertz, but you do have that spot for a mid, then Luis Diaz is another really tempting option. So Liverpool have Crystal Palace at home this week and then again, a double game week. Um, so a real dead end pick that because you can wild card him out straight out straight away into uh, into someone with doubles to come. So you could go back to Foden, for instance, if he's uh, if his injury is cleared up. But yeah, so Diaz and, and Havertz really stick out in those midfield positions. If you want to go for an Odegaard, that's fine. But uh, there's a small risk, I think, of Jota coming back. Uh, he may get some minutes tonight, but I think he's probably more of a threat to Darwin Nunez than uh, than uh, Luis Diaz. So really like Luis Diaz, and he's probably going to be my transfer this week if Foden doesn't make it. Then if you're going for a defender, Virgil van Dijk really looks the safe pick in Liverpool's defence. Uh, Connor Bradley, I think, will probably not start tonight. I've heard rumours that he's going to get a rest, which bodes well oh, wow, for really? his game. Okay. On, uh, yeah, that was only Twitter stuff, but yeah. you know, I think he he may well get a rest along with Salah and um, other key assets tonight in the European game. Therefore, Bradley should get 33. But if Trent gets minutes tonight or at the weekend, Bradley doesn't look like he'll get both games in the double. So... Virgil looks a really good pick. You still got Virgil yeah, in your team? Yeah. yeah, you want you want to hang on there. So, he, but he's not owned by that many. So, he he could be really key. He did really well in the last double game week as well. And then, of course, we we mustn't forget Darwin. He's still a great pick. And if you're looking to um, uh, lose Harlan for a week for a doubler and then just get him back, Harlan's a nice easy one to lose because most people haven't got a lot of built up team value in him. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking about selling an asset like Son or or Palmer for the double game week, you know, you're going to lose a lot of money when you do that. So, but if you lose Haaland, you might lose 0.1 and, um, and, and there'll be so many selling him, you might get it back again. So, um, Darwin looks a nice, a nice swap out for, for Haaland, uh, in order to generate some cash to get anyone you want, really, if you've saved a transfer. So yeah, th those five really stick out to me. There are obviously loads of other options across Crystal Palace, you know, Palace mids, Mateta, who we bought the other week, as a, you know, could have had 10 people on this slide, Fergie. Anyone stick out to you that I haven't mentioned? There's been, it's just been a, a shout in the chat and, uh, uh, you know, and I agree. And it is, it, um, it's obviously risking, but better. Brereton Diaz for Sheffield United has looked, um, he's, he's playing kind of out of position, been at front. I think he's kind of, you know, XGI and his, his you know, his, his actual returns for the minutes he's played on the pitch because he, you know, he had an injury has been, has been really strong. Uh, he's probably he's probably won, won more for free hitters in thirty four. You know, uh, um, obviously next Might week, be a good nice free hit bench player or something. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We'll be doing a, a a free hit special next week. But um, yeah, uh, the, you know, there's. I think I, th I think you've mentioned the main ones there, and and, and in terms of players um, that free hitters could should potentially be targeting this week. This these are interesting. These sort of um, what well one week punts but there's a lot of there's a couple of players in here who could pop off th this week couldn't they um and you know and and you know and if you are free hitting 34 and wild card or not wild card in in 35 they're good options anyway aren't they these are the ones i'm that's personally right i mean that's, that's the idea yeah i guess that's the idea of this slide is that yeah. if you're buying a player now on a on a free transfer yeah um you you either haven't got a wild card left to use or you need to really think about keeping that player now for the rest of the season because transfers are so valuable. You don't want to be doing luxury one wink moves. Exactly. But if you if you are free hitting, these players have really good fixtures on the other side of yeah. the free hit. So that's why they're they've made the cut, if you like. De Bruyne's right in the foreground because I think he's virtually nailed on to get minutes this weekend against Luton. So he is a bit short term. But if you were say selling Son sideways move to De Bruyne same sort of price you know he could get a 20 point he's, against he's Luton. hell of a captaincy shout this week you know if you're exactly. you know if you're chasing you know if you're really stuck and you're like where can I go where can I yeah. go for a real punt like De Bruyne a captain yeah. this week is hell of a yeah. well it brings back memories of that birthday 64 you know, exactly, from, exactly from two that, years yeah. ago and if you need that sort of jump you know there's why not? You know, this could be the Absolutely. week to to do it. The only reason he didn't start against Real Madrid, if people don't know, was that he said to Pep that he wasn't feeling very well before the game. So he was going to be selected. It wasn't a selection issue. It's just he he just owned up to not feeling very well. So actually, 
assuming he's okay now, I think he'll definitely start the game because there'll be a lot of rotation in that yeah. City lineup against Luton. So, and if especially if Foden's not playing, he needs the creativity. So, um, De Bruyne is a great shout. And obviously, we've got the recency bias with Pedro Porro. But if you're looking to get a Tottenham player in, you have no wild card left. Um, and you've got those two doubles coming up and you're free hitting in 34. Porro, great shout for future yeah. attacking returns and two doubles to come. You know, even if you're hitting him in, you, you're you getting your money back in appearance points. Um, Isaac, the, I know he blanked last week, but his form's been electric. Absolutely. He's playing against the top, Tottenham defence at home this weekend. You could easily add Anthony Gordon back in here. You know, Gordon seems to win a penalty every time he steps on the pitch. Um, and he's great in home fixtures. So Gordon and Isaac, he's, either, either of those options well, they're, great. They're fixtures as well. My, my goodness, home to Spurs this week, who are obviously you know, dreadful defensively. That could be like a two-all or something like that easily, couldn't it? Yeah. Then the way to Palace in, in 34, like I say, you know, if you're, if you're free-hitting, you probably ignore him. But even if you're noise, he's in, in such good form. The way to Palace is decent. They're then home to Sheffield United, away to Burnley, and then they double. And then they finish with Brentford. It's just like what yeah. what a what a pick yeah. for the rest of the season. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible pick. Yeah, so he'll be he'll be in most wildcard thirty five teams, but you can get him in this week and steal a march yeah, on agree. those if you're free hitting. So I think he's a great pick. And then there's your man Garnacho, who you wisely brought in last week, Fergie, who's gonna be a great bench option, bench boost option, and is very playable and has, I think, Sheffield United and Burnley coming Sheffield up himself. Sheffield United in 34, who will probably be yeah. ignored by free hitters, you'd guess, because they'd be so, you know, compelled by the doublers. But yeah, home to Sheffield United, home to Burnley. I mean, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be wide, um, well carded in en masse, you know, in, in 35. But I'm hoping 34, he's one of those players, if he can get a, cheeky sort of double return that week um i think he's one which which may go under i, I wouldn't say under the rate you know everyone knows how good he is i mean under the radar from a view of people will just be focusing on doublers won't they so but it's his price i mean that's the thing you know you've got you know he's such a good player if he's still 4.9 i mean he may have hit 5 million now but if he's still 4.9 million he is 4 .9 million. he's He's like he's like Palmer, you know. I've, I'm going to keep Palmer because I bought him at four point yeah, nine. I can't bear to pay an outrageous <laughs> six point one for Cole Palmer. But he's going to be ten million in... next season, mate. <laughs> oh, exactly. Well, you could bring in um, Garnacho for four nine. You know, you can pretty much have anybody else because it will money will be an issue building to that bench boost. So uh, for most teams, so he, I think he's a great enabler. I won't say too much about the last man in the corner there because I think he might appear again later in the program. But uh, I, if you're talking about under the radar assets, then Brentford uh, they don't double. But have you got their sequence of fixtures to hand there? For yeah, yeah home, just read them well, out to well, the end of the season. Insane again. Home, home to Sheffield yeah. United this week. Away to Luton in in thirty four. So those first two are absolutely insane. They're then away to Everton, home to Fulham, away to Bournemouth, home to Newcastle. Just an absolutely fantastic run of attacking fixtures, you know. So um, yeah. yeah, you know yeah. any you know any piece of that attack is. It's really good. This um, that's right. There's loads of options. Thing I like about, thing, thing I like about all those options on there. They just they just look they look like they're not going to be owned by a lot a high, yeah. that not that high ownership. You know, you will if they haul this week, you will gain rank, and that's what I like about them. They're non template picks at the moment. You know, maybe Poros in a lot of teams, but you know they are they're good options. All of them to a free. Free hit this week would be exciting, wouldn't it? I think it's the it's, you know it's, it's the kind of week where you can go against against the crowd a little bit due to various reasons like restings, a couple of injuries, and and bits and pieces. And if you if you picked a couple of these these sorts of players and they really kicked on, you know, if you went for a double up, I don't know, Tony and Buemo, you went for De Bruyne, even someone like even someone like Alvarez on a free hit this week, you know, uh, you know, if like Haaland and then maybe bench Alvarez or whatever, Isak, you know, they're just really exciting options this week. It's just a shame yeah. that the chips, you know, the the chip strategies don't don't kind of really allow it. But um, yes, yeah, so some uh, really good options there. Um, and as we go into predicted points on FantasyFootballHub.co.uk, if you want to see these yourself, uh, you can join down below. Link in the description. But these are for the next four game weeks, thirty three to thirty six. Um, Salah, top thirty eight point seven points. Um, Harland, second thirty point eight. Saka. 28.5 Palmer 
27.4. Luis Diaz, uh, sorry, Luis Diaz, we, we talked about a little bit. I'm not sure his ownership is. I think it was, he was my differential last week and he was 10. Yeah, he's probably j- j- jumped yeah. a touch, but 27 points right up there. Darwin as well, 26.6. Eze, you know, we shouted out Eze on the last pod, didn't we? And he and he scored and I was thinking, oh, we, we called him out. And then it was, he was disallowed, wasn't it? Um, but yeah. he did, you know, he did score. Um, Nicholas Jackson, we've been kind of lo- we've been looking at him, but it's just you know he's got su- he's got some decent fixtures, but kind of volume of fixtures as well. He's still up there. Odegaard twenty five, Havertz twenty five, Son twenty four, Solanke is still up there twenty four, uh, Gabriel twenty three, De Bruyne, Cunha back for Wolves. Um, Wolves are a team. Who I'm, I won't say it. Wolves. Wolves fixtures are pretty decent and they're playing well. They got the. I might be looking for uh, as a next week for my kind of transferring because I'm not I'm not free hitting, but I quite like their double of home to Arsenal, home to Bournemouth. I appreciate the asking and be tough, but they're home to Luton the week after as well in 35, um, and they're also away to Forest this week. I do think I'm not I'm not sure about yeah, it's a nice it's block. Really, it's, a, it's a lovely little block of fixtures. The the last three are, are horrible: Man City, and Liverpool away, including those two. But that little block of fixtures there. If Wolves show the form that they've shown over the last couple of months and you know when Cunha's back and get some serious minutes. I think I think Huang's back in training as well, isn't he? Um I believe I'm so. a bit I'm a bit reluctant to go back there after my last experience of him just getting uh just got in <laughs> while yeah, really he got injured. You were a bit of a love sick <laughs> school girl over but, here. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was. Oh that was yeah I took I took a yeah. hit through as well. Yeah it was that I gotta yeah. have Huang. Um, you gotta have him. Tony's yeah. in there, as is Isaac, as is Huang, uh, Watkins, and and White. So yeah, so some interesting names in there. Nice to see some different sorts of sorts of names as well. But yeah, so players like Luis Diaz, Eze, Havertz, a lot of different, you know, De Bruyne, Cunha, um, a lot of, of different names in there, in there, Rich, which are, which are quite, you know, are quite exciting. What's your kind of thinking at the moment? You know, in terms of your in terms of your top three players, you know your transfers in the top three of your yeah. watch list, up your to target wildcard. list. What, what? Who are the? Yeah, I mean, I think you're looking at. I think this is. I'm not going to overthink it. I think almost if I'm wrong next week when Matthew comes on, he's going to be our guest next week. If his what if his free hit doesn't contain three Arsenal and three. Liverpool players, I will eat my hat live on the show. There's absolutely no way people are going to free hit without three Arsenal and three Liverpool. And so I think if you haven't got it already, you've got to be building towards that. It doesn't have to be the perfect three Arsenal. It doesn't have to be the perfect three Liverpool. But try and get three of each because they are clearly the best two teams who double. So I think my three my three transfers will be to get to that six okay. players from Arsenal and Liverpool. And I can do it quite easily. You know, I'll do something like Foden to Diaz, Dar- uh, Haaland to Darwin. And then if I have to sell Bradley, I'd sell Bradley and move him to Saliba, you know, and then I'd have double Arsenal defence, Saka, dub- and then triple Liverpool attack. Wow. You know, and that's with that's with free transfers. Yeah. So that that's really where I'm going to spend them i i would like a nori i would like you know um you know uh to change the keeper you know i was thinking about getting raya in but i've already got a double in keeper in netto yeah. it's not perfect but he's still got a double game yeah, week exactly. you know i think you've got to you've got to play the priorities and remove the single game week players generate the cash have get some doublers in and then then you've got a wild card in my in my case to to get rid of them all so it's very a very short term doesn't require overthinking because i just i'm getting absolutely hammered by only having one arsenal defender every week and i've got two weeks that i can put that right and not worry about it again so so that's what i'll do uh, i'll get a second arsenal defensive asset and two more liverpool assets probably um attackers who do you think of the top sort of Two or three assets for those um, who haven't got a wild card in thirty-five. So those like kind of like myself and those on, di- on you know on, on different strategies where we're we're playing out for the rest of the season. Where do you think of those those key? I'm I, I, I kind of looking at it. I'm not really sure my transfer this week. A lot of it depends on the kind of Foden and Harlan news. But I I don't have Son, so you know Son for me in thirty-five is a 
obviously an absolute must of getting him back in. He'd probably be just looking at he'd probably be the best captain, I'm guessing, on on that week, assuming it, you know, assuming he's fit. Um aside from that then, you know, kind of looking forward to to the teams. Probably Isak is looks a looks a good a good shout to get in for the kind of longer term as well. He'd be the, the the kind of main. main yeah, I think I think I think Isaac. If you haven't got Gordon, I'd probably be looking at getting Gordon back. You know, maybe a lot of people have got teams full of eight million mids. So again, from a, I don't know what you're thinking about whether or not you're going to keep Salah all the way through. But lots of wild carders will come off Salah to play for the bench boost, and so you could think about doing Salah to Son as an easy move yeah. in thirty five. Um, and you're like you won't be losing out too much to wild carders by doing that. But if you look at Salah's fixtures, he's not someone I really want to lose. Spurs and Villa, um, high lines, <laughs> can't defend you know. in thirty six. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I think it's a harder choice if you're playing through now who to, who to choose for for this week. I mean, I, I I would I would would say you know get three or four good fixtures out of a player, including a double. I think that's what makes Wolves guys attractive yeah, with their that's right. exactly that. with their run of fixtures. You know, Palace just feels like a a dead end choice or a free hit choice. Definitely. I've never trusted Everton. You know, everyone's going on about Branthwaite and Pickford, but you know, Everton lose most of their games and they don't score any goals. But other than so, that, <laughs> other than that, they're great. <laughs> you know. yeah. Exactly. So you know, so there's not there's not a huge amount of pickings outside of the Arsenal Liverpool guys but there's nothing even if you're even if they don't double in 35 there's nothing wrong with keeping their assets for two or three more weeks before you swap them out for 37 yeah. doublers just because they 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 win all their games you know they're in a title race so and they're easy to trade you could trade Saka for Foden you can trade Salah for Son you know for their doubles so it, it, I think it's easy to 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 load up now and trade them on later or just hang on to them if they're still if they're still banging in the points i i i really think staying with that template on wildcard the temptation on wildcard is just to change your team isn't it it's to change exactly. it all around and use use those free moves when actually the the power five if you like as i have it now you know salah son saka um who's the other i can't even remember they are palmer and son you know that there's nothing wrong with it it's it's perfect so you almost want to keep it as long as you can. Yeah, t- tough. <laughs> Some pretty tough decisions are going to be going on later. There's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of violin moments down there. I feel of because there's so many good options, and as the season draws to its conclusion, like, and because everything's so close, it means all the top players are going to be playing kind of most of the games. The way the season's gone, there's going to be loads of goals. There's going to be massive, brutal, brutal swings. Just got to hope that we kind of land on the right side of, of yeah, and of that's, more that's than what I'm hoping for. Exactly. Well, I mean, we had that amazing swing, didn't we, last year with Isaac and Wilson? Do you remember that one when there yeah. were two options and everyone was thinking Wilson would be benched <sighs> and Isaac would play, yeah. and so everybody went Isaac because of the expected minutes. But actually, Callum Wilson, Wilson scored it, four yeah. goals in the double game week and scored forty eight points, and Isaac got three or something. Ooh. And if you're the wrong side of that, it's, you know, game over, isn't it? So it it's indeed. like, but at least if you get swings like that, it gives you the opportunity to win and lose. Whereas if you've just got all the assets scoring the same points, you, you don't get any gains. So I think it's just having those swings that 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 we want on the running. Um, FPL uh, Chai is in the chat. Welcome. Uh, what, what a manager um, he is. Great to have you with us. Um, FPL Freddy says uh, Isaac and Hoyland uh, will be popular in wildcard 35. Uh, Monkey D Ben Havertz should be considered for captaincy now too. Uh, he's nailed and has ridiculous fitness. Um, FPL Whoop says I'm not sure holding Foden could do Foden to Diaz and Zabani to eight Nori for ten doublers. Like we're gonna look at our teams in a minute, Rich. What are you, like Harland and Foden? What I mean, what are you, what are you thinking ahead of this week? Uh, are you just gonna kind of just Obviously, we'll get the pre- um, you know we'll get the press conference, and we we should I don't know I get the feeling we're going to get a leak. Um, are you going to have I a, hope we will. a bunch of what what if scenarios like if Foden is Benz, yeah. I'm going to do this. If Harlan is Benz, I'm going to do this. So, yep, it'll be a very late transfer. It'll be <laughs> one of those ten ten fifty five 
jobs on Saturday morning, um, hoping for a leak. If Foden is going to play, then I want him against Luton because he's some something of a differential. And I've h- held on to him when loads of people have sold. And yeah, I'd like to give him the game, you know, and the, the downside of that is I have to play, you know, I don't know, Harry Maguire or something, you know, off the, or, or Mateta has to play away to Liverpool. I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, I've got a bench this week. Um, so if he is out or if he's, if, if he has a, favorable chance of playing I'd, I'd I'd like to keep him but I given the game state of the Real Madrid game I would say 70% likely he doesn't play I see he had, um, well, he had the knock as well didn't he I think I think I think yeah, he came after knock. the game and yeah. said like he just had a bit of a dead leg and Pepsi yeah. just had a knock but would you play him with the Real Madrid I mean it's you know they're not going to no. get an easier game this no, season I think he'll be fit I'll be he'll be fit for that he'll be fit for that leg so therefore he's all right for the following exactly. week and he's all right if you're holding him and don't want to buy him back because you you don't have a wild card. But I think if you're going to... And I've got to lose players. I've I've made up my mind weeks ago. I'm keeping Palmer and Son yeah. through yeah. game week 34. So I've not got many slots left on my bench. So I've got to sell Foden in 34. So I might as well sell him in 33 um, if he's not going to play. And therefore, it will be Havertz or or Diaz. Both, both great picks. And I'm currently just leaning... DS because I just think that I can make I can get a uh, an Arsenal defender yeah. yep. later on. Just so stuff. that's 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 my likely moves, but I'd love to keep him. I think Haaland plays. I think Haaland didn't have a great game against Madrid. He he wasn't really that involved. He had that one shot early on, and um, I think he'll need to to have some minutes this week. He may not get ninety, but once the game's three or four nil, he'll he'll come off. But I think he'll get a piece a, a big piece of that. Against Luton, probably my captain. Speaking of, speaking of captaincy, um, best yeah. FPL game week captain for game week thirty three. Uh, looking at hub predicted points, Harland eight point seven points, which is quite quite high actually for for a single um, a single game. But yeah, he's predicted eight point seven points. Salah is close behind mine, eight point two as well. Home to Palace, good fixture. Sun is six point four away to Newcastle. The way that New I know they they kept a clean sheet last week in Newcastle, but they they've been pretty awful, haven't they? De Bruyne we mentioned earlier, um, six point four. Saka is at six. Tony is at five point nine. They obviously home to Sheffield United. Mm-hmm. Isaac uh, has got has got Spurs five point nine. They play Spurs, you know, who are who are all over the shop defensively. Palmer five point nine. Really good options there. Um, Foden isn't in this. Uh, because he's currently flagged by FPL, that's knocked his yeah. protected points down. You've reduced to just his uh, minutes down, haven't you? Yeah, yeah I've so, seen that on my team. Yeah, so at at at, at the moment, because of the knock, um, his his minutes have been reduced down. They they kind of reduced down with the percentage of the knock, if that makes sense. So if he was due to play eighty and he's fifty percent flagged, he'll go down to forty, for example, which is why why he's down there. So some a lot of options there. Um, and on our poll on fantasyfootballhub.co.uk, Harlan top 51% of the vote, Salah second 21, and then we go down to Palmer six, Foden five, Tony, Tony three. But mm. a lot of potential options there, Rich. I know Harland at Luton, if he plays, is, uh, I mean, it's just a no brainer, especially after he put five past them, you know, a couple of months That's back. right, yeah, in the cup game, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They, they couldn't cope with City, could they? Um, but, you know, I've seen some suggested lineups for for city and it's just if you you know start thinking they're going to bring alvarez in bring doku in you know they could change the whole front five or six uh from the madrid game it still looks well capable of winning the game by three or four so um i wouldn't be bringing city assets in this week uh certainly because it's probably the hardest lineup to guess even even though the you know the the experts that try and guess the lineup. It's probably their hardest week to guess the lineup, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think get it spot on. It's going to be all, you know, we're all going to be on, on X, aren't we? Or Twitter on um, half past 10, quarter to 11 on Saturday morning. It's going to be one of those mornings where I have to say to the kids, you need to give me 15 minutes now, thanks. And I'll go and sit with my coffee in the, you know, in the study. Yeah. In the, in the study, in the dining room, <laughs> and uh, just sit there and just keep refreshing and having a keep lovely make sure that I get they get the most of the information with the little a couple of little flows. If Harland and Foden are confirmed out, then I'll do this. If Foden, if Harland, if both play, then this and wherever else, and just make sure you can <laughs> flow chart time. Exactly that. 
Um, third year's a punt, uh, game week 32 to 36. I have been on form these last few game weeks. I've picked um, Luis, Luis Diaz two two game weeks ago. He, he returned, I think. Uh, so quite happy with that one. Uh, this week, I'm going for a bit of a bit of an FPL legend, actually. I think he, he he's missed most of the season through injury, but played. Uh, I think I think I think he played 90 minutes. Let me just check. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Was it 90? Might Close to it. He played. Yeah, he played 86 minutes last week, and he's home to Sheffield United this week. Superb player, as I say, a bit a bit of a, you know a bit of an FPL legend. He's I haven't checked his ownership, but it's going to be ridiculously low. I wouldn't be surprised if it's kind of under 1%. 1%. But um, Brian Mbomo is uh, fit and and firing. And um, I expect, uh, you know, in terms of looking for a differential, um, he could really, you know, him, him and Tony, you know, in all fairness, could have an absolute field day of these next couple of weeks. Sheffield United um, and, and Luton uh, are two brilliant fixtures um the Luton game obviously falls in the double game week for 34 but there's nothing to say that you know, there's a lot of single game week players who could who could do really well so you mentioned rich you know if Foden is injured you know go through his DF it obviously makes makes sense you know but um uh Brian and Buemo is 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 looking good for me uh good option yeah Matt Willey says Colonel Mustard with the spanner in the study. Absolutely, I, I don't have a study at all. I just uh, I've got a dining room, and I work. I work from the dining room, but to the kids, it's the study. Dad's off. Dad's off to the study to do some work. <laughs> Sit in the dining room with a coffee. Room. Um, got your team on screen now, Rich. Uh, for game week. Oh, why did you say game week thirty-one? Um, well, it's a bit of an old oh, version. No, well, it I hasn't didn't. Updated. I... It hasn't updated. Hang on. Oh, I didn't, I didn't make a transfer. In... Oh, bugger. Anyway, do you want to okay. sort of run through your, your actual I'll, team? I'll, <laughs> Sorry, Rich. I'll have a look he at it. I'll, I'll get it up on my phone. Really give me, give me, bear, with me, bear with me one second. I didn't make a transfer last week, so it won't have, it won't have um, uh, changed that much. So my team, as it stands, is Neto in goal. I'm going to play Connor Bradley. I think uh, it'd be interesting if the team news breaks yeah. in the next couple of minutes on the yeah, Liverpool game, but I think he's probably going to get a rest tonight. So... Bradley at home to Crystal Palace, uh, Zabaniai at home to Man United, and Gabriel um, at home to Villa. So all my defences at home, which is a rare thing. Um, at the moment, power five midfield, Saka, Palmer, Son, Foden, Salah, um, and Haaland and Solanke up front. Again, both with home games, those two guys. So my bench is, at the moment, Maguire away to Bournemouth, Mateta away to Liverpool, and Doughty, who I, a bit like Maguire, I just cannot find an opportunity to get rid of either of those guys but I've got to get rid of them at some point or I'm going to have to play one of one or two of them in uh, in the double so uh, yeah my transfer if forced will be Foden to a mid um, uh, Diaz or Havertz or I will do Doughty to eight Nori if he's fit um, so I'm waiting for press conference news on that I really should make a defensive move this week otherwise I'm going to be stuck with Palmer, Son, Maguire and Doughty in the double and three into four doesn't go. So I'd have to play Palmer in the double. No great issue playing Palmer in the double, but he is away to Arsenal that week. So quite benchable. So yeah, team looking good. I can get to 11 doublers in game week 34. Uh, and that is is a possibility, but it would, inv would involve me selling both Foden and Haaland in the next couple of weeks. So not sure I might do 10 with Haaland quite fancy playing Haaland in the as a single you know because he could he could throw 20 points in any get any game week couldn't he so absolutely yeah 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 you're right rich I've just I just ran ran through now on um on fantasy football hub my team because it was recommending Maguire to gusto but I didn't I didn't put your 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 chip strategy in as wild card in 35 yeah. I've just ran it through again putting your chip strategies wild card 35 bench boost 37 and your recommended transfer one transfer this week um Foden to Luis Diaz that is yeah, what it, well, that's, that's in, line with, uh, in line with my brain exactly yeah, that's that. good to know that the AI is thinking the same way as me mate so yeah that's 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 that doesn't make that doesn't surprise me at all um gusto will be on my mind but not until yeah. after after game week 34 if you want so yeah if you want your own recommended 
transfers, customised, personalised to your team, go to fantasyfootballhub.co.uk forward slash my team. Go to um, AI transfers. If you input your chip strategy on the pick page like I just did for Rich then, it takes into account your chip strategy and makes transfers based on those as well. So, yeah, it's um, it's obviously changed from Maguire to Gusto to just Foden and Diaz and roll the second because I put Rich's chip, chip, chip strategy in there. So, good stuff. Um my team is is on screen and is correct. I've got a game week rating of ninety four percent, which I'm quite excited about. Actually, team's looking pretty good for this week. Uh, Neto in goal. Obviously, I'm holding him for um, the double, as you said, Rich. Next next week, even though the fixtures next week away to Villa, away to Wolves. Born, but Bournemouth seem to be defending quite well recently. I've I, I've I've only been looking at their results a bit a bit more than than other teams because I've got Neto in lots of fantasy I, formats. I, I, I've, I've got a funny story about this. Go on. I've I've had obviously had double Bournemouth defence for since game week twenty eight, yeah, yeah. I think it was. And so it has been if you've been sort of if you're sort of watching the games on a Saturday afternoon, they're not necessarily shown live, you know, you're sitting there watching updates via a third party on Sky or BT or whoever the, the, the host broadcaster is, and you just keep getting these updates on the the they haven't been conceding a lot of goals, but I think on three out of four occasions, they've let a clean sheet go yeah. in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and sometimes they've let it go in the last two minutes. Yeah. And, you know, when you're holding on to a double clean sheet, it is death by a thousand cuts. So there was one time, uh, I think it was game week 32, when we weren't uh, we weren't podding. <laughs> when we I did get a double clean sheet and it was like, you know, I think uh, a friend of the channel, was it Simon um, on Twitter? He sent out a note saying, Rich has just That's sprinted right. to Wales to give Fergie a hug <laughs> because Bournemouth have kept a double clean sheet. Oh, away. Right. It did feel like that. It I did. was running around my living room celebrating because I got 14 points out of my Bournemouth defence, but on three occasions it hasn't worked out and it's been snatched away at the death. So if only we can see in one haven't they that 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 was the point is it is is it defending well i think i think in all of them like i said i've only noticed because i've got him in multiple formats but you know either they've got the clean sheet or they've only conceded one which has been annoying but um yeah i think like a weight of it a weight of wolves it's not the best but if they can sneak a clean sheet one clean sheet out of those two it will you know it will be worth it because the other options it will be not not that fantastic so i got netto in goal uh, Gabriel, uh, Virgil, and I've got Gusto home to Everton this week, which is pretty decent. Expect him to play, I think. Um, and I'm going to hold him through. I'm going to bench him for 34, and then obviously I'll, I'll have him in place then for the doubles, even though, like I mentioned right at the start of the show, I'm not I'm not massively excited about Chelsea defence in 35 and 37 just because the fixtures are so tough. Um, Salah, Saka, Palmer, Foden, and Garnacho. So I don't, I don't have Sun. I had to sell Sun the other week for Salah, which worked out okay. I think Sun in the two game weeks I have had him for has got like two and a five, which is I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I think I've been quite fortunate because he's hit the post in both matches, so I have been quite, quite fortunate. Um, but I'm happy to hold Garnacho um, over the next few weeks, especially in 34 and 35, and then um, Haaland and Solanke. So I've got. I've got Kaminsky, who is just kind of, you know, a dreg from a ridiculously wild card where I tried to optimise 24 and 28. Senesi, um, did he come on? I think he might have come on, you know, for Bournemouth last week. I think he played Senesi. He played four minutes last week, Rich, and he's normally... It's close, yeah. You double, might be all right with him for the double. I might be able might to be squeeze okay. him in the double. Again, it's not the best fixture, away, you know, away to it, away to all. It's not tremendously exciting, but, he, he you know, he is attacking. He... He scored on the game because I benched him when I got him in on wild card. He's 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 all right to have in a double, you know, especially ahead of someone like Gusto. So I'm quite happy to kind of hold him there for that. Mateta is on the bench. Let's uh, just say away to Liverpool. He's the, he's the kind of player Mateta. It looks like as he did last week against Man City, where you can see Liverpool winning like three or four one with just an odd Mateta goal. You know, just uh, mm. you never know. Yeah. I mean, he's done. We've got a return out of him already, haven't we? Exactly. And... He's gone up. He's gone up point one. We might steal another point one before the double, which will be nice from a team value perspective. And I think you know he's right up there with the picks in the. You see him on a few free hits because people will yeah. either maybe have him as a bench in a bench forward in a three five two, or they'll just pick him ahead of Eze because they'll have more more midfield options and they can shake a stick at. So I think uh, Mateta is still a good pick 
uh, for the double um, and clearly first choice at, at Palace um, at the moment. And while he keeps scoring, he'll continue starting. So I'm quite happy with him as the, yeah, as the choice there. I, I think it's right to bench him away to Liverpool though. Um, and I think you've got it got it set up. So what, what are you doing? Are you rolling or are you, I think uh, I am. I, are you just getting rid of Foden? I've got to be honest. I, I hadn't, I hadn't looked really uh, much. I kind of, I always, when there's European games and midweek games, I tend to just leave it to all the games have played out because, you know, I don't see the point in making these, uh, you know, in making plans. And then, for example, I don't know, Salah gets a knock tonight and he's out because it completely changes everything, don't it? But I've got, I've got eight Nori last on the bench. It's because he's flagged. Um, if he's confirmed as fit, I'll, I'll, I'll be playing him definitely. Or at least shift him up the bench. So I don't know. I'm 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 pretty tempted to I'm pretty tempted to roll and kind of roll the dice a bit on a on a fold and start. If he's confirmed out, he'll be gone. Obviously, if he if he is confirmed out, my my recommended transfer this week, I think it's the same actually. For yeah, fold and fold into Diaz. If he's confirmed out, yeah, I'll be doing that move. Um. But if he's not, if he's, you know, he's fine and he, you know, you get really it's slightly response. For you, I think it's slightly harder because easy with the wild card to triple up on Liverpool and then you can bin it. You can bin it off in game yeah. with 35. You've got to hold them all the way through. So I think it's a slightly harder, harder decision for you. I might go, I might put Gordon in there or something, something a Gordon, bit more strategic. Gordon, Gordon's a good shout, yeah. 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 Well, I need to be yeah. a bit, a bit careful with money as well because I, I, mm. I'm definitely going to want Isaac soon i've only got 1.8 in the bank um so yeah. and this and so this gordon, one gordon would help you with that you know help you with that isaac money and, uh, and, and, I'm, te I'm, te and... I'm tempted to roll this week and roll a dice bit on Foden because i like i'm always thinking of what would hurt me more and do you know what would hurt rich if Foden starts and scores a hat trick against Luton, I don't. I, know. I don't know what I, I do. I, think, I don't know what I, I do. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> I know people who who, ben, who benched him for both hat tricks. Yeah, you know, I benched so him for the first one. It's just yeah, and then sold him for the other one. Yeah, I, I, at least I've had one hat trick out of him, and I I know what it feels like now. Well, so well, uh, there's no way I'm ever benching him again. Well, looking <laughs> at it, if 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 eight Norrie's fit, I'll probably play eight Norrie over Garnacho. I think, which means I'll, I'll have Garnacho first bench, which is more than decent for Foden. Um, so I'm, I'm quite, and, and and Mateta on the bench. So I'm think yeah, I'm thinking right. I'm thinking I might roll. I think I'm not I'm not 100 percent set yet. Obviously this this is the thing with doing it on a Thursday evening is you still got the press conferences. You still got the the Saturday morning sort of jitters of oh my goodness Newcastle you know Newcastle against Spurs and you know and looking at Isaac and Gordon and kind of forcing something or ramming something in. But all being equal at the moment, while I'm in a moment of calm. It's probably sensible to roll in my position because yeah, I, think I need so. to maximise my transfers, transfers over the week. I want Son and maybe Porro in at thirty-five. I want Isaac in at some point, you know. And so yeah, I just yeah. Need to give it. Yeah, I'd roll. Your your bench is strong enough. You you probably put Sinesi third bench, but you 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 definitely got two good subs there. So so yeah, yeah, it looks good. Agree. Um, we've had a, a couple of questions about the best keepers um, mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. Both. You and I have got a have got a turd on the bench, haven't we? You've got you've got Turner, <laughs> and I've got Werner from Turner. And I've got Kaminsky. <laughs> um, we've both we've yeah. both got Neto. Yeah, so, who would you say, Rich? Like from from now, or you know, who would be the best? It's, it's hard I, to get excited because I mean, no one's keeping clean sheets. It is. Well, I was thinking. I still think Raya. If you haven't got a triple up on yeah. Arsenal already, I think if you just want a set and forget keeper now till the end of the season. If you have Raya plus a doubler, you know, either doubler you can play in 34, first of all, or a doubler you can play in 35 and 37, then you can always sell Raya for a second doubler in the bench yeah. boost game week. But that's not for five games. So you can get five games out of Raya in the meantime. Yeah. You might keep four clean sheets in those games. So I, my personal choice would be Raya. I mean, I know some people are selling Raya. He doesn't make many saves because the defence is so good, but that means his clean sheet percentage is so much higher than any other keeper. And so I think you've got to look at clean sheets first and bonus points for saves second. So I, so I think Raya, I think there's a lot of shouts for Pickford, but I think we said earlier, Everton just lose most of their games. So why would you get a keeper from a team that loses most of its games? 
uh, or most of its points, the way they get punished again before the end of the season. I think they've got a third offence, haven't they, under consideration? A, so I mean, they could. Yeah, I think there's there's a there's a very simple fantasy rule that um, Ian Parrin. I, I don't I don't know if you know Ian. He's he's, he's, he's yeah, from, Sky he's from the hub. Skyman, Planet Sky, primarily yeah. at Planet Sky, and he says, get good defenders from good teams and good attackers from good attacking teams, and it's it's just so. When you just see it, I, I know I know budget budget restraints, right? But Pickford is just a, I won't I won't I won't swear or be no. de derogatory, no. but he's, he's not, just not he's a, not the one. He's not very good, he's is not, he? And he's, he's not, not he's doesn't not play for a good for me, team. I think, <laughs> no, I mean, and then you've got the same problem. If you go if you get blindsided by doubles, you think oh, um, the Cario for Spurs, you know. Um, uh, Petrovic for Chelsea. I mean, Petrovic save points, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> he could get dropped for Sanchez. You know, um, Tottenham last kept a clean sheet in the 1970s. Um, you know, there is there's no solution. There is no easy solution. So if you're if you're, I would probably just keep the keeper you you're have. Just hold it, folks, and your transfers elsewhere. That's why I've you? sort of gone off gone off wasting the transfer on Neto. I'm just going to keep Neto. I don't expect him to keep a clean sheet in the double, but he might get me four or five points that week, and that that'll do. Well, he got he got I'd four rather... last week, didn't he? Even though they conceded because he got That's the right. save points. That's it's right. Just... He made about nine saves or yeah. something. Yeah. So uh, he he's good for saves. They might spring a clean sheet. Um, but there's there's no there's no obvious answer. Um, I think I'd be tempted on wild card to to get one of the Chelsea and Tottenham players just because they have two doubles, um, and then it would be the other one would be a you know a filler, uh, probably a, a three point nine filler something like that. Henderson's not a bad shout if you're free hitting. You'll see him in a lot of free yep. hit teams for thirty four because he's four point four mil um, and two home games. Okay, um, that is it from us for this week. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who joined in the chat. Those who watch it back and those listening on the podcast version, your support, as usual, is very, very much appreciated. Uh, Rich, thank you so much. Uh, where can people get hold of you? At Rich Clark FPL on Twitter or X. And don't forget, Rich Rich runs our, our ultra uh, membership here at Fantasy Football Hub. Um, if you ever want to take a look at it, if you ever want personalised advice for your team from arguably the uh, best FPL manager of all, all time going for his 18th consecutive top 50k finish rich going for your 18th yeah, don't think i'm gonna get it um take take <laughs> I, I think you are take a look at fantasyfootballhub.co.uk and uh take a look at our ultra membership my hell on twitter uh, is at evade underscore fergie this podcast and video will be on the fantasy football hub youtube channel with the podcast versions available on all major podcast platforms if you like what you watched Please press the like button. We really appreciate that. Just one little thing. Just press like. And remember to subscribe to the channel in the bottom right-hand corner if you haven't already. I've just had a look, Rich. We're on, we're on 90, just over 90,000 subscribers. I'm hoping by, by game week one, we can get the channel up to 100,000 subscribers. Get one of those. Do we get one of those... Um... We do, you mate. know, nice plaques get, that get, Harry got get this week. Exactly that. Well done to Harry, yeah, that would by be the nice. way, for, uh, yeah. for well done, Harry. amazing milestone. Um, he came. He came on a green arrow about three years ago with you and me, didn't he? he did, Harry, he when did. he was he was still at school, I think. He, he, he was. <laughs> um, but he's done. He's done fantastically well. Congratulations, mate! If you listen, absolutely. Um, if you enjoyed your listen, please rate the podcast uh, and leave a comment. We'll be back next week, and we've got a special guest next week. We've got eight-time top ten k manager FPL Matthew, as we will be looking ahead to double game with thirty-four with a free hit special we are very very excited for that matthew again is one of the best managers of all time and uh, he's very very good he's been on, been on green hour a few times in the past and he's always tremendous value um in the meantime we hope you have a great gamey 33 we hope phil foden starts and bangs and may all your arrows be green good night all